It's not empty, right? Mm -hmm. to warm up we've just switched on here we go again round two of lockdown um, happy new year to everybody happy 2021 i haven't done this since when was last time i did this in the summer and i can't remember what i'm using i'm using the ipad today it's not uh the quality is not as great as my phone but it's much bigger to see so i hope it all works out okay um as per usual this is going to be going out live but I know that a lot of people watch it later on. So the first couple of minutes will be me blethering, so feel free to zip forward on that. I will also post it onto YouTube afterwards. Work, once I work, work out how to get a Facebook video and put it onto YouTube, I'm sure it won't take too long. That's good. I love when people talk to me because I know it's working. Hi, everybody. Hi, Amy. Hi, Lewis. Hi, I think Grace might be on. Um, I'll keep comments on throughout because I think it's really important in case there's issues that you can tell me and Alex is with me today as well who is my primary sex boy um, from Abernethy Primary School um, so he also can keep an eye on it because sometimes I'm a bit busy and I don't see all the comments Hello, is that Sophie here? Hi Sophie, are you up for a challenge this morning? Um, this lesson is ideally what I would do up the school of primary 6 and primary 7 but I have to be honest with you, um, on a one-to-one, -one, you could easily manage this all the way down even into primary one. Um, being an art teacher of 30 pupils sometimes can be quite challenging. So sometimes doing something like this with 30 kids is really, really, really tricky. Um, but if you're just with one child, it's really, really straightforward because you can give them all your attention. So, um, happy new year to all of you who've just joined. I hope that you're all well. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas holiday. I am missing you all greatly. This is Tuesday today. Normally on a Monday I'm with upper schools, um, but I changed the day. I felt Monday was a bit much for people because it's the first day of the week. And you have, you've got quite a lot of work to do. Um, so welcome to everybody. This is going out live, so please bear with me if there's any glitching, if there's any interruptions from my three-year-old who's running about upstairs just now. Um, the cat might come in. The doorbell might go, in fact, Alex, can you go and shut that door to keep the background noise down to the Um, If there's any issues, please, please, please just let me know. And yeah, I guess we'll get going. Hi, Emma. I've, I've missed a few comments there. Hi, Emma. Hello, hello. Um, I'm really impressed that so many younger boys and girls are here. That's brilliant. You're up for a challenge this morning. Right, today, let's get started. Today we are going to be creating one of my favourite winter lessons to do. Yep, go for it one as assistant. This is my finished example here. Um, I thought yeah, that's a bit too close. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And just put that down there just now. Alex likes to be the comedian in the background. Um, we are going, we are going A4 this morning, purely, purely because of time. But if you want to go bigger, if you want to go A3, which is double that size, go for it. I would not recommend going smaller than that because it can get a little bit fiddly. So we're going A4. So I put, <laughs> which I never really thought about this. This will be back to front for you. This is our checklist for today. So, um, yeah, sorry. I should have written it back to front. Because no, I so the first thing that we're going to do today is we are going to mask off some winter trees. Now, I want you to think of creating like a sort of birch tree, which are beautiful, really, really pretty. They've got like a white bark to them. So we're going to mask off some of the paper. Now, lots of my kids have used masking tape before. It's one of my favourite things to use. If you haven't used masking tape before, it's just paper tape. Decorators love using this. It protects anything that you don't want to get paint on. So a decorator would use this to mask off maybe the ceiling so that then you wouldn't get your paint onto the ceiling. Artists will use it to protect the canvas or the paper, whatever it is they're trying to use. We're using a really good quality cartridge paper. If you're using a thin paper, like a sort of photocopy style paper, you'll probably think the tape will get stuck to it and not come off again. So you're wanting to use a bit of card or a nice bit of paper. If you don't have masking tape, please don't worry. Just paint the sky like normal and then you can cut your trees out of white paper and stick them on. Or what also can sometimes work with a lot of sticking 
You can cut the tree shape out of paper, use a bit of blue tack or white tack and stick down the tree and then paint on top and then pick it off. I think we're going glitchy now. So if you've not got any masking tape, please don't panic. You really, really don't need to have it, but it is, it's a great investment and it only costs about a pound a roll. So, right. Um, another thing you can do before you do your trees, if you want to, I'm not going to because I need to pick up my paper time and time again. But what you could do is you could mask off a border on the edge of your paper, which will give you a really, really nice edge, give you a really nice professional touch. We've done that before in class quite a lot. So you normally go top, side, side, bottom. That's the order I would put it in so I can remember when taking it off. So top, side, side, bottom. If you want to do that, I'm going to go straight for it. You might want to protect the table as well for painting time. So before you do this, maybe put something underneath the paper. Right, paper tape just tears, so you shouldn't need scissors for it. So if I show you really, really closely, when you try and tear it, if you try and pull it and stretch it, it won't break. It's pretty strong stuff. So doing this just sort of, you know, just screws up the end of it. It's not great. So what I recommend you do instead is use your fingers like you are a little crab. Okay, so have pinchy fingers. And what you're going to do is you're going to have your pinchy fingers at the top of the tape. And if you just keep one straight, but then one set of fingers, it tears really easily. Okay? So what I want you to do is decide how tall you want your tree to be. Now the tree will need to go from the top of the paper and travel down into what's going to be your ground. So think about where you want your ground to be. You don't want it to be away down at the bottom. You don't want it to be up really, really high into the sky. You're aiming for about two thirds of the way down. So I'm going to pull off enough tape that will give me two thirds of the way down and then I'm going to use my pinchy fingers to tear the tape. Now it might start to twist around so just hold it really tightly. So I'm going to put that at the top of the page. I'm trying to keep it straight because we don't want sort of a sleeve of tree unless it's falling down. And you're just going to smooth that out. Try and make sure you've got no air bubbles out. So Alex, yeah, that's just spun around so just be gentle with it. So just pull out enough for your tree and then tear it. Now I'm going to put two pieces of tape side by side to get a really wide, thick tree. So I want the same length of tape here, and I want a slight overlap. So if I just show you how I've done. Now it's slightly short on one side, but don't panic about that. Okay, so if I just show you what I've done now, I've got two bits of tape overlapping, coming from the top of the page all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so that tree one done. I'm going to have to give some attention to my poor little sex child right now, his tape is as well, so yeah, this is the tricky bit. So if you're a younger pupil right now, you'll be finding this bit a bit tricky. Or even if you're in P6, you might be a bit tricky. Oh, he's done it, he's done it, he's done it, done it. Oh, so small. No, it's not, that's perfect. I've done it before, it's done it before. If you haven't done my lessons before, I always get my kids to help me, because it helps me realise when you at home might be struggling, and also it's in real time now. A lot of the videos that I've noticed on YouTube are just somebody on their own with no background noise or whatever, and they fast forward a lot. But I quite like to have this this approach. I don't know. I don't know if you know. Right, we've done one length, so I do another length now and double it, so it's a thicker tree. While he's doing that, I'm going to just like I did in my finished example. So this is a double thickness tape tree. This is a single one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a single one as well. I'll show you in a second how to do your branches. Okay, so at the minute we're just doing the tree trunk. So again, I'm just pulling off enough tape. And I'm just going to tape. Can I at this opportunity say thank you to mummies and daddies, grannies, grandpas, teachers, don't forget teachers in schools, who are letting you use their iPads or phones or whatever right now, or laptops, thank you very, very much. Kind of a bit of a problem if they're trying to work right now, so thank you. Okay, so we've got a single tree there. You can't really see it very well, just look for the beige and then a double tree there as well. Right, come on, you're holding everybody up here. Okay, and deja vu. Last tree. So it's beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So we're going to double that up. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay, then just smooth that down. You don't want any air bubbles here. Right, next up branches. This is when it gets quite fiddly. So I want you to first of all think about trees. So you've got your tree trunk, that's the thickest part of the tree. Then you've got your main branches that come off the tree. 
they're about roughly about half the size. Then somewhere along that branch, it'll split again and you'll start to form a thinner branch that will probably split again somewhere and you'll start to get some really, really thin twigs. So the thickness of the line as you travel up the tree and outwards from the tree to get thinner. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to make some branches. Now your branch, you don't want to make as thick as the trunk. So think about it that way first of all. So what I'm going to do for my first branch, coming off my double layer of tree, is I'm just going to use one piece of tape. Okay. And think about the direction you want your branches to go as well. Normally they go slightly diagonal. They don't normally go straight out. They normally go slightly diagonal. Sometimes they might droop down a little bit. But think about the thickness. Okay, that's okay. Don't worry about ripping the tape. We need that. Now, you're probably wondering, oh, but how do I get my really, really thin twigs that come off those branches? Well, what you'll do next is you'll just tear off a little bit of tape and you'll split it with those pinchy fingers again. You'll split it down the middle into two. Now keep one bit, you can always use it. And if you don't like the length of that, you can tear it and make two. And now what you can do is you can actually have some branches coming off of the tree. Branch. Twigs. Twigs, branches. This is when you can pick up all the this is when you can pick up all the little bits of tape that um, might be screwed screwed across the table. Please don't scrunch them up because I can't. It's easier to put them down. Because they're ripped. Please don't grab that one. That's really nice. So if you want these to get really, really thin, you can. So basically you are creating masking tape with trees. Love that. A little bit like that. It's going to look a complete mess at this stage, by the way. You have to have that vision. The vision of what it's going to look like. Right, so I've done two. If you want to get really, really fancy with it, you could really, really tear off some tiny slivers of tape and use those all in a bowl. But that's maybe getting a bit too far. Okay. Now, don't forget at the end of this today, boys and girls, um, mums and dads, whoever it is that's taking part, teachers, could you please post me some photos because I'd love to see what you've been doing. Really, really, really important for me. Sometimes I see things and I think, oh, that's a good way of doing that. I'm going to try that next time. Um, talking of which, I never went over the resources that you're going to need to do. So we've got paper, we've got tape. You also will need something to create the colour of your sky. Now, we are using watercolours, but I did say last night that if you don't have watercolours, you can use normal box and pens and just add water to them once you place them down on the sheet. And they act like watercolours. So please don't worry if you don't have any watercolours. Sorry Sam, I've not ignored you. Hi Sam, I hope you're doing well today. Happy New Year. Right, you ignore Sam, get on your keys please, because I want to move on. Right, some branches now please, so split the tape down the middle. Thank you very much. Quickly Alex, not loads, not loads of tape here. Don't need lots of tape for your branches because the branches won't be as long as the tree trunks. Also, I've got two trees on. Try and keep them in a line because you are going to have to draw the ground. You're going to have to draw the ground coming around the trees. So don't have one tree really, really high up in the sky and then one tree away down here because then you're going to have to have a really steep slope. So think about your placement of your trees. Okay, right. Listen, you're going to have to hurry up because you're just too good. That will be fine for your branches. Yeah, actually, like, I like the torn edges because trees are never straight. Trees are never straight. They've always got bumps and nooks and crannies on them. tree trunk with no branches, that looks a bit strange. Do you really need more tape? Do you not use up the tape you've got here? Because this is actually usable. Okay. Good quality tape's always good at this point as well. If you've got really, really um, cheap you know, quality tape, you'll find that it just sort of lifts up again. But make sure, as I said earlier, make sure that all your ear bubbles have gone. Also make sure that you've not got any gaps. When you've got your layers of tape, try not to have any gaps. Hiya Chloe, I miss you, I hope you're doing well. 
Okay, right. I don't think you need any more. Okay. 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 Okay, so as I said earlier, make sure you've got your trees, try and have them in a similar placing. Try and not have one away up high and one away down low. So now what you're going to do, where, this is a very strange, but where the higher up tree is, that's where you want your brim to go. So now with a pencil, I'm going to press really, really hard just so you can see that. I want you, and go right across the tape by the way, to draw a horizon line. So that's step two, horizon line. Okay. But you don't want your horizon line to be below where any of the trees are because then your trees will look like they're floating up in the sky. So this is your horizon line, so your trees will be going into the ground. So that's next steps, which I'll, I'll, I'll catch up in a minute. Hi Jackson. Nice to see you. Hello Mrs. Jura. I hope you're right today. You've been working hard on me. Hey Alex, I really, really, down. I really don't think you need any more branches. You've got, it's got like... 15. No, 5. This could take, this could take an eternity. Right, I think, can we please make that last one? Thank you. Okay, horizon line now please. Now I hope you were listening to me. The horizon line goes across the bottom of the branch. The trunks do not put it in between. Yep. Focus and just a nice sketchy line for you. Remember a nice sketchy line, not a nice hard line because then if you do make a mistake and try and rub it out, it'll be impossible to get rid of. So we have got that and then we're going to move on to the fun bit. So, done our masking, we've done her horizon line. Um, next up, we are going to create our sky. Now, I posted some photographs. The sky was really disappointing this morning. Thanks, Mr. G. The um, sky this morning was really disappointing. I was hoping for a good one this morning. But over the weekend, it was cracking. So I took a couple of photos and I put them on the page. So hopefully you had a chance to look at them. Oh, look, he's here. Lots of people, Havana, Callum, Jakob, Alicia, Elijah, James and Alex. Hi guys, how are you getting on the hub? I miss you all. I hope Miss Anderson's looking after you. She said she was going to bring you on today. I hope you can see me okay as well. Right, what was I saying about the sky? So think about the skies that we've been getting. We're getting some really incredible skies over the weekend there when it was nice and frosty. And I love winter. They were really good ones. They were, they were lovely. And the sunsets have been really nice as well. The great thing about winter is, one of my favourite things about winter is you get to see them. In summer you don't because you're normally still in bed when they come up. Well, some of us are. Um, so you actually get to appreciate the skies. The sky, and it takes forever for the sun to come up in winter as well. So the skies have been phenomenal. We've been getting lovely pinks, orange, lilacs, purples, indigos. Really incredible lights. And they've been really, really stripy if you've looked at them. So the horizon, they've kind of mimicked the horizon. They've also been really, really sort of splodgy in places. So we are going to try and now create a splodgy, bloody, stripy sky. Thinking of all those colours that you can see. So colours that you don't expect to see in the sky are like browns, greens, then... You can see green. Where? Some green stuff. Where? Where's I trust you to get hold of these. When you're colour mixing, be really, really careful. Think about mixing your primary colours with your secondary colours, because I can think of a problem. For example, if you use blue, which is prominent, a lot of the same sky, and then you try to put a little bit of yellow in mixed with the blue, what would you expect to happen with green and yellow? Green. And that's the colour that I'm talking about. So be, be really, really careful when you're placing your colours down. Think what might happen. Okay, now... You want your paper to be wet at this point. It's nicer to have wet paper because the, you don't need to use as much paint oh, yeah. and it spreads much easier. But I don't want to go down into my snow section, into my ground. So what I'm going to do before I start with my sky is I'm just going to choose a colour to paint on top of that pencil line. So I'm just going to go really simple with a navy. Okay, and I don't want this to be wet, believe it or not. I know I've just talked about a lot about wetness, 
I want that just to be a nice dry line. This stops, this will stop my bloody sky going over into the snow. Now, don't worry about the tape. Sometimes I see boys and girls really struggling. They don't want to paint on top of the tape because that's the tree and they're trying to keep the tree fight. Don't worry about it. Totally ignore that. Right, now what I'm going to do, Alex, you can paint your line down. You have got a paint brush that's in here and the paints are sitting right next to me. Yeah, there's two paint brushes like that. Right, so now what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to spread some water really quickly over the top of my paper so it's nice and damp. And we don't need to worry about the colours just now, we don't need to worry about um, how neatly we do this. Just get it in water. Okay, and this is when I hope you've got the table protected underneath you. We haven't, because we gave up on this table a long time ago, haven't we, dude? Give <laughs> up on this table a long time ago. Three kids, you know. Right, so I'm just going to splodge some water down all over that, so it's nice and wet. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about my sky, so I'm going to think about the colours I want to use, and what I'm going to start to do now is I'm just going to quickly lay them down. Leave some white spaces at times. Not huge white spaces, however, but some. And what you'll find now, what you can see that okay, is it starts to spray, it starts to splurge. If you haven't put the water down, it'll just be really stripy and not very natural. Hi Sam! I hope I see you on Thursday. Sam's in this dress and set again. Sam's getting the biggest smile. Gonna go for some purple now. So I'm just colouring water. Just whatever colours you want your sky to be. Maybe that one, but maybe. Oh, you get that one. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Because it suits this one. Yeah. I'll get that. I like using pink because then the pink mixes. I'm not a big pink person normally, but the pink mixes with the purple. Okay. Oh, I'll just put the water on this too. Right. Paint. I'll go over it again with you because you, you're 10 steps behind everybody else. Paint the line. I know. At the bottom first. Okay, it doesn't matter. You'll need water. Now at this point, as I'm saying, if you don't have watercolours, please don't stress. Use a pen. Okay? Just use a normal pen like I've just done there. And then use some water. You don't even need to have a brush, you can use a finger. And then just go over the top of that pen and it yeah. That only works with water soluble pens, so it won't work with sharpies or anything permanent. Um, it will only work with just to be honest, just any old felt or pens you've got kicking about the house. Okay, right now I'm gonna paint a bit of the top. Sorry, just put a bunch of colour. Yeah, just go for it. Longer. Just go for it. The messier the better. You know, don't be scared to splodge colour on. Then go for it. Yeah, watch my brush go. Okay. Okay. Now, this is now gonna cause problems for part two because we need this to be dry before we can pull off the tape. While it's still wet as well, there's another additional thing, I didn't put this in the description, but if you want to create something like stars and like atmosphere, you get, some ta it. get some table salt or some rock salt and on the puddles pop some salt and look what happens. It draws in the water, it absorbs the water, soaks it all up and when it dries it crystallises and looks really lovely, really, really effective. We've done it before in class. Oh, Right, get going before that dries. There's no point in wetting your paper and then having a chit chat for five minutes because it'll dry and then you'll be back to the beginning again. So I need to let this dry before I can pull off my tape. So that's going to cause a few problems at home. You've got choices here. Just watch what I do and then go and do it. Or get a hairdryer, quickly blast it with a hairdryer if you're really, really impatient. Or to be honest, the bottom of mine is actually starting to dry already. It doesn't take long for this stuff to dry. What I did last night was I created a larger version. So that's what you're aiming towards now. Okay, so I'll give you a few more minutes just to finish up the painting because I know Alex hasn't done it yet, so that means Paul did do a lot of you haven't done it. Um, so that's a thorough wet and wet wash, one of my favourite things to do. And sometimes if you blow in it, it can move. Hold it up there. And if you hold it up, be really, really careful at this point. You know, sometimes I get boys and girls at school who are like, look what I've done, look what I've done. 
And at this point, there might be a big puddle of paint and all of a sudden it starts trickling down the page. If you have ended up with any splodges on the plate, grab a bit of paper towel or a kitchen roll or something and just try and blot it up. Don't worry about it because it's probably just dirty water and it will actually look like reflections or shadows on the snow. So don't panic about it. But if you have ended up with a wee dribble or something or a splatter or you're sitting next to somebody, you can imagine you just now done Barney Boys and Girls and somebody's going like that a bit mad and they flipped paint onto your paper and it causes issues. So if that's happened, then don't worry about it. Hiya Lily, how are you doing this morning? I hope you're well. Don't worry, just should catch up. I, as per usual, completely leverage at the beginning for about 10 minutes. So zip, 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 zip until you get to the good bit. Right, Alex, you're placed on this now, but you're doing a lovely job. Okay, I think I've given you all enough time. I'm going to give him, actually, can you concentrate on the bit? You've not got any paint on. Just now, there's a dribble bit there, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Right, I'm going to show you next how to take the tape off. It's a very delicate operation. And it's really tempting at this point just to get the tape and just go. <laughs> but be aware of that because if you do rip it off really quickly, probably what's going to happen is the paint side are not dry, and the big puddle that's next to the tape will then flood over your tree, and the tree will vanish, you won't see it anymore or you might rip your paper, so be really, really careful. Now, what you have to do here is you have to take off the top layer of the masking tape first. So if you've done a border, some of you are new, maybe did a border to get professional, take that off last, don't try and take that off first. My bits that I put on last were all my little branches. So you didn't see me do this, but I did it last night. So I'm gonna now really slowly, gently peel off the little branch, I'm just going to show you that. Not there. Okay, so that's just the paper now. So I'm going to go and find all of my little branches and I'm just going to gently pull these off. So apologies if you can't do this yet because your paper's still wet. If it's damp, it's fine by the way, it doesn't need to be bone dry. But if there's big puddles of water and it's shiny, you know that that's way too wet. Harris did one with me last night and he got some of it done and then just had to wait for the rest to dry. Okay, so I'm just going to pull off all these little branches. But a hair dryer good at home. We can't use hair dryers in school because we don't have 30 hair dryers. Okay. And it would be a bit of a safety, health and safety thing anyway. But if you're at home, hair dryers are great. Right, so I'm just pulling off all the few branches. Apologies about missing a lot of the comments. I've been so busy. I'll try and read them when I've come off. And Alex normally keeps an eye on but he's too busy today. Right, oh, while you're painting, be careful. The paper is wet, it's really, really fragile. When you're using watercolours, just place them down and let them be. Don't keep going over again and again and again and again and again. The paper's wet, the paper's fragile. What you're starting to probably find if you are doing that is there'll be little, little flecks, little dots appearing on the surface of the paper. That's actually you wearing away that top layer of paper. You're actually starting to rip the paper because it's nice and fragile. So once you've laid your watercolour down, just leave it. Just leave it, let it be. Once it's dry, you could go back over it again, but don't punish it. Don't keep going over and over and wearing away, wearing away, wearing away. Because you will actually burn but the paper. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Cards even worse because then it's got lots of layers of paper. Right, yours is going to dry really quickly, actually. Okay, um, yeah. have I taken all the little grass off? No, there we go. Alex, just, just a way to try and take off his tree trunk. No, you take off all of the little branches first. Do not take off the big tree trunk. Because when you pull the tree trunk up, what's going to happen is all the branches are going to come off with it and you're not going to have any control over them. So realistically, you're going to pull it and they're probably going to take off all the top layer of that fragile paper as well. So I've done my branches first, my little thin twigs. Now I'm going to go to the branches. And remember, just take your time. Wiggle it left and right. If the paper starts to rip, stop. Go the other way. Pull the tape from the other direction. I'll show you that. Got a lovely branch there. I'm hearing footsteps. If they end up getting three year old coming in here, I can only apologise. Because when she gets in, she will not leave again, will she? Especially when she sees paint. Yeah. In fact, let's get a wiggle on. Right, pull on all these branches off. 
So you're pulling the tree trunks last. I think that's everything. Sometimes this happens. We end up a little crack where it's just the paint's just gotten underneath the, the, the edge of the tape, if you call it. Please don't panic about that. That can just look like a bit of texture on your branch, your trees. It's not really a problem at all. In fact, that looks really nice and really natural. Mm -hmm. But next up, we've got the brand, the big tree trunks are about to come off. So, I when I pull the tape off, I pull it in. If you imagine the tree, I pull it in the way so that then, if it does start to rip the paper, all that rips is that yeah, white yeah, tree. Right. If your paint's wet, don't pull the tape off. Okay, so we've got the middle tree off. And then we've got the big, chunky, thick ones that come off now as well. There's a nice thing to on it. In school, normally what starts to happen at this point is we start throwing these around like snowballs. Next up, shading. Right, so a little bit of technical chat for me right now. I've got a torch and I've got a cylinder shape. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about shading. Actually, you can actually see it from the light coming from my window right there. So, if you are a tree, you will have one source of light above you. It will be the sun. Okay, in a house it's a little bit different because you've got lights in the ceiling, you've got lights coming in from various windows. So the source of light in a room is a little bit different. But in nature, normally, it will just come from the sun. sun. So if you imagine, that's my tree there, that's my tree trunk. This is the sun, this is torch. And if I shine that onto the tree, coming up from there, you should notice that down one side of the tree trunk, it's much, much darker than the rest, okay? So I want you to decide, with your landscape, of course you can, Definitely Miss McDonald. If you are, if you've got the sun up above you, it won't move around. So decide, is your sun coming from the right? Is it coming from the left? Where is your sun coming from? In my picture, I'm gonna go for the right. Okay? So that means if my sun's coming in from the right, the left hand side of my trees will be slightly darker than the rest. It also means oh, that's what Underneath the branches will also be slightly darker than the top because they're underneath, so the shadow will be created underneath it. So what I want you to do now is grab a pen or a pencil, whatever you want, and you're going to put in a little bit of shading. Okay, so I am now just going to go around my tree underneath and I'm going to draw some lines. Not on top, just underneath. If you've got, this was the one I did last night. If you had any um, colour bleed, then you can also go for that with a black pen. Yeah, so where the yeah, so just put a pen line underneath your branches, not on top, and down one side. So I'm definitely going for my left because my light source has come from the right. Now my tree's coming into the ground. It's not sitting in the background there. So I'm going to continue my line down into the snow. Mr. C's not here just now, he's working, so we are um, containing her upstairs with her big brother. We've still got so many from Christmas to get through. So you see what I'm doing there? The left hand side and the underneath of the tree. Don't now 
forget what you're doing and then all of a sudden she did the right hand side of the key because it gets a bit confusing to the viewer when you think that doesn't look very realistic, you know. And the sun's coming along from two directions. Okay, and then think as well about the underneath of your tree. And they, can, they can be at different heights. I mean, I've just got my sharpie here. You can go with whatever you want. You can use a pencil, you could use a bit of charcoal. You could use a normal pen. Oh, no. What's wrong with that? Who does done what? And what's wrong with that? that but that's your side. I know, but what about this? That's it. I just don't know how to do that. I just need to focus at this point. It doesn't need to. It's all difficult. Just, just focus at this point. Okay? Right, so I've done all of my left and my underneath of the tree. And also, I've done a little bit of a curve underneath. Hi, Abby. Nice to see you today. Okay. Now, what we're going to do as well for our shading is we are going to use, um, I'm going to use some of the mucky water to do some shading. But you could use charcoal, pencil, uh, normal vinyl, whatever you feel like using. But I'm going to go with the mucky water. And what I'm going to do is, again, down that left hand side. Oh, 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 before I do that. Because it'll be wet and then I won't be able to do this. I might also want to just put some lines or some texture in the bark. Hans did this last night and he did like a really nice owl bow in the middle of his. It's cute. Did he? Yeah. That's not his. It's hiding under there. Don't look at that just now, just go on the work piece. Uh -huh. You can look at that one. People aren't watching you. Okay. If you had something, you might have a little line that's come down the middle where the two lines are. With the tape was just pop that in if you want to go with the top. Little dots. I love doing all this because at the minute I feel like a lot of the lessons that are being shared and are being encouraged are all really academic. I don't really feel like there's a lot going on that's quite creative. So this is, I think this is really important. Okay, so I've done a little bit of texture, a little bit of lines, and then we're going to go in for a bit of shading. So as I said earlier, you've got some options. You could get a bit of charcoal, you could just use a normal pencil to do your shading. Um, totally up to you. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually use the, the dirty water that we've already got there and I'm just going to actually use that again down that left hand side underneath to create more tone which will help everything look a bit more realistic. Also you could put some underneath where the tree trunks go into the snow and if there's a dribble that's appeared on the bottom does it matter? Put my footprints on here. One of my favourite things to do is to use a normal pen. I've shown you that already with the sky, but you could use a black pen, like a normal colouring in black pen. I did have one somewhere here that's here. You just use one of these pens and that could actually dissolve in water. Yeah, so just get some dirty water, honey. I'll just go underneath your branches at this point. sheeting there, if you can see that or not. And that is about it. I am going to, in a second, love and leave you all, just to get on with this, and also um, just give you more time, because I know a lot of you probably had to give up there because your trees were, your sky wasn't dry. Um, what I want you now to do, once you've got this finished, I mean, you could leave it like that. It will look phenomenal as it is, and it will look really realistic. But I mean, if you want to add extra things onto this, like snow, snowmen, fences in the background, you could do anything like that. Some tools that you could use, I love a chalk pen. Chalk pen are great for adding the snowdrops. So you can just I I do a load of dots, well, okay, stars if you want to do. So you could just do a load of dots onto your sky. Also, that works really well if you even want to use Oh, there's my a layer of snow on the top of the branches. If you don't have a chalk pen, just get some white paint. And don't use the brush, use the handle. Do your dots. 
we do that in the classroom, we don't have 30 paint pens. And um, so you could just use the bottom of the brush and pull points and dots. If you use the bristles, what tends to happen is people splodge and then it all spreads out and you don't look like perfect snowdrops. You could um, do shadows. So you could draw silhouettes of people, snowmen, dogs, animals, anything that you want with just a normal sharpie. Once the paint's dry, you can draw whatever you want on top of that. You could even have some silhouettes of um, other trees in the background. You could do fences, you could do whatever you want. I used on this one here, I the, the snowman, I just used the chalk pen with that. But I mean, you could get a bit of scrap paper from somewhere and you could cut out the shapes and stick them down with a bit of glue. So when it comes to adding all of the extras, I'm done. That's when you guys get to be creative and do whatever you want. So when it comes to adding the detail, do whatever you think looks best. But please don't forget to send me an image of those as you did because I just love to see what they look like when they're finished. Okay, um, I think that's about all I have to say. It was my checklist. I had a little checklist just to double check. Of course, I forgot. Tip expense. I'll go for this. Produce that for So, yeah, I've got lots of tools in there. Just charcoal, pencils, whatever you want. So, I'm probably going to wrap things up now and post this. Um, please remember to send me your photos. Next Tuesday, we're doing another favourite art lesson of mine. It's the collage winter oh, landscape. Oh, that one looks like me. Um, again, not a lot of materials will be needed, but I've posted, I've already put it up there actually. So you'll need some paint, some paper, some glue, but most of all, you just need a bit of creativity. If you don't have everything, please don't panic. And also, if you don't have things, if you're looking ahead for next week and you really want to take part, please let me know. I am more than happy to go to school and collect anything that you need and come and drop it off to you. It won't be a hassle at all. Get me out of the house, to be honest. Um, also, at home, we've got loads of stuff. So if there's, if you're looking at the list going, oh, I really, really want to do this, but I don't have any black paper, message me. I'll pop something to you. I'll send Alex around with Mary Wee with the sledge. No, I'm too busy with that. No, you'll all be kind. Okay. Um, so if there's anything on that list that you don't uh, need, uh, don't have and you need, please don't go and buy. Just let me know. I don't want you not taking part because you've not got what you need. That's not fair. So just let me know if there's anything you need. Oh, it's Mrs. Hardy saying hello. Hi. Hi, Mrs. Hardy. Hope you're doing well. Did we have oh sure day off today? Well, day off. Um, so yeah, we're going to post this now, I'm going to stick it onto the Facebook page, I'm going to stick it onto YouTube once I work out how to do it, I can't quite remember. So if you're catching up right now, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support, thank you for joining in, thank you for all your lovely feedback. Any issues with this, please message me, any problems, anything you want to say, if there's anything that I've not s explained properly, eh, bye. bye. So anything you want to comment on, please let me know, I will not take it. Weekend. Right, take care. Have a lovely remainder of your Tuesday.